Hello. I spend some time tutoring people in math, and I've noticed that many people have a very hard time understanding how to use their calculators. In fact, for many people, it's the hardest part of the class. Professors don't usually teach you how to use them because it's not actually part of the course material and they just don't have the time. So I decided to create this video series to help people understand the basics of how to use their calculators, particularly the TI-83 series, which includes the TI-83, 83+, plus, 83+, plus Silver Edition, 84+, plus, and 84+, plus Silver Edition. This certainly isn't the first video series on YouTube on the subject, and I doubt it'll be the last, but it doesn't hurt, at least not usually, to have something explained in more than one way. This introductory video contains information that you may want to know before buying a graphing calculator. And the YouTube video description contains information that you may want to know, but that I don't feel are important enough to mention in the video. Before you buy a TI graphing calculator, you need to ask your teacher or professor if it will be allowed. For some classes, you may not be allowed to use graphing calculators because they do the very work that the instructor is trying to teach you to do on your own. For example, in my trigonometry class, I needed to put away the TI-83 Plus that I had been using since the 8th grade because it would graph functions that I needed to be able to graph by hand. As another example, a student once told me that for her one required math class, college algebra, her parents bought her a very expensive Texas Instruments Voyage 200 calculator. This particular calculator has a full QWERTY keyboard and is therefore considered by many to be a small computer rather than just a calculator. You don't need a calculator like this for college algebra or anything in a high school class and you will likely not be allowed to use it in any class and you'll certainly not be allowed to use it in standardized tests like the ACT or SAT or the GRE. So ask your teacher at the beginning of the year or semester if they allow graphing calculators and what kind. These calculators are expensive and if you don't well, you just don't want to buy one if you're not even going to be allowed to use it. If you can't use a graphing calculator but you can use a scientific calculator or even if you don't want to spend the money on a grapher I would suggest the TI-30X2S calculator. Since the name is odd and because there are other calculators with very similar names but very different function, I will put an Amazon URL in the description. This is the calculator that I used in trigonometry and it is without a doubt the best non-graphing calculator that I have ever used, mostly because it understands order of operations and it will display your entire input string but also because it's very easy to use. But that's really kind of beside the main point of this video. But this is just a recommendation. If you already have a calculator or if maybe you bought one that's not exactly this one, uh, don't be too upset about it. There are plenty of other really good ones out there. See the video description for more of my comments on this calculator, but I want to quickly say that you shouldn't mistakenly think that more expensive means a better calculator. Some calculators, even the ones carried in Walmart, are expensive because they are specialized and would be very difficult for a non-professional to use. Also, be aware that if your college algebra class involves linear regression, which would likely be one of the last things that you do all semester, this will absolutely require a graphing calculator and cannot be done by hand. When I demonstrate use of the calculator, I will show what buttons I am pressing on the right and the display on the left. You may notice that the display that I am showing is not an exact screenshot of what the actual calculator will show you. This is merely because I don't have a TI emulator and I don't think it's important to get one for the purposes of this video. And I also think that my version is a little easier on the eyes. What is shown on the display will be exactly what would be displayed on an actual TI-83 Plus calculator, even if the font or colors are different. It is recommended that you view this video in YouTube's expanded mode, since there will often be many items in the frame at once. Thanks for listening, and if you are interested, feel free to watch the rest of these videos, preferably in the correct order if you're new to this kind of calculator. But there are some videos marked as optional that you should feel free to skip if you don't want to watch them. And it can be kind of hard to remember all the nuances of this device, so be prepared to scrub back and forth through these videos and pause if you need to. 
these videos are not by any means exhaustive of everything that can be done on a TI-83 series calculator. And if you've ever seen the manual for an 83 series calculator, you probably know why, and that might be why you're here. Hopefully in time, these things will become second nature to you. My goal is to cover the things that will be needed in a college algebra course, and hopefully get you to a point where you're familiar enough with the calculator that a simple Google search can help you if you're stuck.